consortium, the Horizon 2020 project is usually composed of various partners led by a coordinator. However, there might be also additional members to the project, the so-called third parties. This chapter specifies the types of third parties that may be involved in Horizon 2020 projects and their main characteristics. The most important feature of third parties is that they do not sign grant agreements and therefore are not full-fledged members of the project consortium. The third parties are connected to a project beneficiary who usually remains responsible for them. It is important to mention that the costs of third parties must comply with the same general and specific eligibility criteria as the costs of project beneficiaries. The Commission defines them in Article 6 of the Grant Agreement. The beneficiary should always conclude a legal contract with its third parties, such that would specify their rights and obligations, including intellectual property rights. We distinguish between the following types of third parties. A subcontractor, a contractor, linked third parties, third parties providing in-kind contributions either for free or against payment, and international partners without funding from the EU. In case a call explicitly allows it, the project may entail financial support to third parties. However, this so-called cascade financing is not treated in this chapter. Let's take a detailed look at the different types of third parties. Subcontractors and contractors of goods and services are quite similar to each other. These two are the only project contributors who do not compute their budget solely on the cost basis as they may show profit. The profit is usually part of the issued invoice. This is actually linked to another requirement which applies both to subcontractors and the contractors of goods and services. The beneficiaries must base their purchases either on the best value for money or on the lowest price. The selection process should be in line with the national legislation and the usual practice of the institution. At the same time, there are important differences between subcontractors and contractors. The most important distinction is that subcontractors partake of working on project tasks. Therefore, the work to be implemented by subcontractors must be foreseen in project proposals. In case the proposal is successful, the foreseen subcontract becomes part of the Annex 1, the description of the action. In case a subcontract was not foreseen in the project proposal and yet it is necessary for implementing the action, the beneficiary should contact their project officer. In exceptional cases, the project officer may apply the so-called simplified approval procedure and decide that the use of the subcontractor is approved. In most cases, however, it will be necessary to adopt the process of amending the grant agreement and to officially add the new subcontract to the project. Finally, the Commission does not allow subcontracting among the project partners. On the other hand, contractors of goods and services do not work on action tasks. The most common examples might be the costs of consumables, of the certificate on the financial statements, costs of renting rooms or catering for project meetings, or costs of protection of intellectual property rights. This list also suggests that contractors do not have their own cost category. Their costs are included in the other direct costs category. As opposed to subcontractors, the costs of contractors are included in the basis for the computation of the 25% flat rate of indirect costs. Another type of third parties are the so-called linked third parties. These may be affiliated entities and third parties with a legal link to a beneficiary. For instance, a parent organization and its subsidiary or an association and its members. The main feature of linked third parties is their long-term link to the beneficiary. The link cannot be created only for the purpose of the Horizon project. Unlike the subcontractors and contractors, the linked third party computes its budget and reports to the Commission on a cost basis which must be supported in the third party's accounting. The linked third party fills out its own financial statement and, if applicable, delivers its own certificate on the financial statements. Similarly to subcontracts, the linked third parties work on project tasks and they must be foreseen in the project proposal. Finally, the beneficiaries may also use 
the so-called in-kind contributions from third parties, either for free or against payment. Most often, it is the case when a third party lends the beneficiary some of its equipment or even seconds its personnel to the beneficiary. If the contribution is against payment, the third party issues an invoice, which cannot include the third party's profits. The in-kind contributions must be also foreseen in project proposals and therefore listed in Annex 1 of the grant agreement. In fact, the third parties providing in-kind contributions do not work on project tasks and do not have their own cost category. The last, and not that common, third party in Horizon 2020 projects may be international partners who perform their action tasks without receiving EU funding. They may be partners from third countries, such as the United States, Japan or China. They need to fund their project activities by themselves, which also means that they do not need to report their finances to the Commission. Still, their contribution, including the expected budget, must be foreseen in Annexes 1 and 2 of the grant agreement. The table summarizes the main features of third-party participation in Horizon 2020 projects.